And still too much close up of my face. Hello. Home battery wanted to be shitty because I forgot my tripod today. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this is the last of my tasting vlogs, and I totally forgot to bring my tripod, which is brilliant. Um, yeah, so enjoy these awkward camera angles and me holding this like a selfie. All right, first off, we're doing a Pinot Noir Rosé. The, let's talk about that rosé. Um, it's clean it, on the mid palate. It was a little tart, uh, a little sour apple going on, and uh, just like a, a hint of watermelon underneath it all. It was nice. Uh, the tartness kind of gives it a little extra dimension than I was expecting. Next, we tried the 2017 Edna Valley Chardonnay. Uh, it's very oak heavy. Um, I would wager American oak and. Um, Kind of hits like a little creme brulee on the mid palate. Maybe even some Hungarian oak. Uh, either way, it's very aggressive, but then when you actually taste the wine, it's not as heavily malic as I was expecting. I was expecting this to be like a butter bomb on top of the, the oak bomb. And then shout out to Tim, my wine tasting attendant. Uh, he recommended tasting the two Chardonnays that they have on the menu against each other. So this is the 2017 Khalifa Chardonnay, which apparently is this vineyard that's right out in front of us here. I love this maybe the Pinot vineyard. Or not, not as aggressive, more palatable. I think this has gone through a little bit more malic, uh, malolactic fermentation than the previous one. It's just, there's a, there's a kiss of oak, um, it's softer, it's, uh, there's a little more vanilla to it, maybe cream, and then kind of a little honeysuckle in there. Although at the, at the end of the day, um, at, on the finish, it kind of comes out and gets a little bit stronger. Wow, I've been going back to the Edna Valley after tasting the Khalifa, kind of has, made me think of Godfather's Pizza back home for some reason, I don't know why. The oak is, doesn't taste as aggressive. It's very present. It's, it's I would say, the defining quality of the Edna Valley Chardonnay versus the Khalifa. Um, Khalifa has more subtle notes and uh, is rounder. It, it helps, I would say, make it more palatable. So out of the two, I, I much preferred the Khalifa Chardonnay. And next up, we have number three, the Khalifa 2018 Pinot Noir. Uh, again, Khalifa vineyard right in front of us. Um, and then I also got a 2016 Merido Pinot, which is from, uh, I think he said eight blocks, select blocks of the vineyard over by um, their sister winery uh, right down the road. Thoughts on the Khalifa Pinot? Notes of dry strawberry. Um, I got some baking spice off of it. It's a little astringent on the finish. I don't know if that's due to the climate or due to the growing conditions from 2018, uh, but smelling the 16 Marito Pinot. Oh, damn, that is good. Like, wow, I can sit here and smell this all day, which I think should be on a shirt. What do you think about that? Um, ooh, wow, that is really good. Uh, seriously, uh, if you want me to put, I can smell this all day on a shirt, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but seriously, wow, the Merino Pinot. It's very big in comparison to the Khalifa 18, 16 Merino. 
It is kind of, um, it's big. Dark red fruits, um, almost a jamminess to it. Beautiful nose, like raspberry on the nose, like a hint of chocolate. Oh yeah, that is that is that is fun. Um, you, you hit kind of, on, on, on the palate, there's like raspberry, I don't wanna say boysenberry. Um, or marionberry kind of going on in there. Uh, it's like a sweet tart thing on the finish. I really like it. It's it's a big, bold pinot, and you know me. Love them big and bold. But then going back to the lighter, Khalifa 18. A little vanilla on the nose. It's coming back. But it's so much lighter. Um, it's crazy, the difference between the two. Although it does finish strong, it's still... It's. I would say that would be light, lighter bodied, whereas the 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 Marito makes a um, medium body Pinot pretty nice. Moving forward, we have the 2018. Moving forward, we have the whoa. Moving forward, we have the 2018 Khalifa Grenache. What a nose on that one! It's very inviting. It's very fruity on the nose. Something red. God, it's been so long since I've done proper tasting. It's hard to just remember what everything smells like. Blueberry. Um, oh, whoa. Whoa. That is fun. Um, it's overwhelmingly blueberry. Like, if this was an air airhead flavor, it would be blue. If this was an icy flavor, it would be blue raspberry, which isn't a flavor, but it, it it's very blueberry compote, um, blueberry yogurt. Um, oh, it, it says blueberry compote. Yay me for doing the right thing. And uh, rose petals. <laughs> wow. Can't miss that one, can you? And since it's Cuif of Vineyard, that means, again, it's right here. So it's from, it's a cool climate Grenache, which... Um, I don't have as much experience with as being up in Paso, our Grenache is more warm climate. Wow. Um, yeah. Blueberry. Wow. That is overwhelmingly blueberry. And uh, that is really fun. I like it. Final taste for today is the 2018 Edna Valley Syrah. Ooh. Okay. So it says black currant. Um, I smell like a peach cobbler. They say peach and pie crust, interesting. And violets, it's an inviting nose. Another cool climate Syrah we had one last week when I was tasting at uh, Edna Valley Vineyards. It has that like fruitiness, but it, it presents itself as sweetness, but it's not sweet, it's, it's fruitiness forward. And then hits like the those Syrah notes over the finish with like a little hint of black pepper. Um, actually, no, I'm gonna go yeah, black pepper with for this one. I would usually say white pepper for a Syrah, but it's a little more aggressive. That's nice as well. Now, while I'm here, just a little bit of background on Chamisil. Their winemaker here uh, has been here for f about 14 years, from what I think I understood. Uh, he's originally from New Zealand. So I feel like I've met him before, uh, or at least was like in an area that he was in, but I, I can't tell you how many different people I've met in this industry over the past seven, eight years. It's a nice spot. They're, they're very COVID safe. Uh, everyone's wearing masks. Um, everyone's distanced pretty well. And again, I'm here on a Thursday, so not as busy, but it's been this. This has been the busiest tasting out of the three that I did. Probably about five groups, four groups here on uh, in the afternoon on a Thursday. Of course, always make your reservations if you can, so they can be prepared for you. My glasses were set up when I got here, um, and I was here a little bit early. Uh, the moment I checked in, they poured my wine for me, and then Tim brought me over to my my place to taste. 
and he gave me a spiel about each wine, which was very informative. It's what I love. They did that at uh, Claiborne Churchill, and that way I had all my wine here and ready for me. They they did like the placemat format that you would find at say like a, a wine convention. I went to YVI for a few years and the tasting panel would always have like five glasses with a circle where the glasses go and underneath it would say what it is, which again is another way to do it. I like how they have tiny magnets to keep everything stacked to the table. Again, each winery we went to for these last three tastings, they've all had different methods and ways of, of doing the tasting. I don't know why at the beginning of this, I didn't think, hey, everyone's going to be doing it differently because I guess it's because everyone else, like the food industry has been doing this. We're eating outside. So that's exactly how we're doing it. We're takeout orders. Um, I forgot that there's such a variation in the wineries themselves and how they do their tastings regularly or pre-COVID that it's just, it reflects in how they, while they're all being safe, they all find their own unique way to present the wine, which is really cool. And as you probably know, this is the 20th episode uh, out of 20 that I'm doing in February. So we did five episodes per week for the month of February to kind of kick off free wine coming back. Uh, next week, I'm going back to the three episodes a week format, uh, but we're going to switch it around. Monday is going to be a fun episode. Wednesday is going to be the informational episode, so I have a little bit more time to do it. And um, Friday will be interviews, vlogs, and reviews. Uh, and reviews might get switched to Monday as well, but Monday is going to be like pairings and stuff like that, at least for the much month of March, which only takes about five episodes off of my load, which is weird. By the way, that's what's happening next week on Rewind. Thank you for joining me again on uh, Rewind. It's been a few years and it's fun to be back. Um, it was a little strenuous doing 20 episodes in the course of uh, four weeks because I didn't have any of them prepped like I was planning to do when I originally thought I would do it, bring Rewind back. But that just made it more fun. And hey, look out next month. We're going to be doing fun things like uh, we have an interview with Taco Bell Sommelier that I screwed up on my first week of Rewind uh, being back. So it's been pushed all the way back to March. And on top of that, we have yeah, some other fun stuff in store. I'll figure out what that is as we go. For the time being, I've really very much enjoyed myself at this Chamisol Vineyards tasting. Uh, Tim was an excellent host. And let me know if you've been out tasting and feel confident and safe enough to go tasting um, with all these precautions put in place in the comments below uh, please find me at my youtube page uh, rewindshow.com we'll take you right there you can share like comment subscribe smash the bell do all those things to help me out with the algorithm and get my wine show trending or whatever i don't actually care i'm just doing this for myself and for you all well, this has been rewind my name is b schwitty and i will catch you next time